up everybody, I'm Lil B Gamer, and I am here with something very different from what you have seen me post in the past. Today I'm going to be playing a roleplay dating game called Doki Doki Literature Club. Now you may have heard of this game, and it is apparently very graphic and disturbing, and it is not recommended for people who are 13 years of age or younger. So if you are younger than 13, disturbed by graphic images, or have like depression, anxiety disorders, and stuff like that, I do not recommend watching this gameplay or playing the game, or especially playing the game yourself. But, now that that's out of the way, without further ado, I'm going to be playing Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay, so we're going to be starting a new game, obviously, because I have not played this game before. My brother has played it, and he has told me some things about it, and I have seen, like, images and spoilers and stuff on Instagram and other social media. I don't remember any of the characters' names and what happens to, like, the specific characters, so lucky, luckily for me, I'm not going to be too spoiled by that. So, without further ado, let's get this going. I'm just going to put little B, and we will go. I can't see my face up in the corner with this, so, like, it's supposed to be, like, up in the corner, which is unfortunate. I can't see it, but we're just going to go with it anyway. All right. see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. I'm trying to pick out like a good voice for this character. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but started around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the walkway and let Sayori catch up to me. I hope I'm saying her name right. Ha! Ha! I overslept again! My voice acting is so bad, like holy shiznuggets. But I caught up to you this time! Maybe. But only because I decided to s oh, maybe, but only because I decided to stop the wait for you. Oh god, this is so bad. Eh, you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, little bee. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. Oh god. Forgot this is a dating game for a few short seconds there. But you did wait for me, after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. Hey. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Lil B, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm really not interested in joining any clubs. Oh wait, that's me again. <laughs> I haven't been looking either. Oh god, I'm so bad at this. It's funny though. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going to talk going on about. So Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Girl, you already missed out on that. I have, like, no friends here in college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. Well, there goes my phone. And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. Because you're neat. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised to even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. I really hope you can see my face, can't even shoot myself if you can't. 
The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I even know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blatantly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. God, same. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hey, I was in the anime club when I was in high school. And I'm thinking about joining the anime club here at college, too. To be completely honest with you. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You and me both, girl. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know... Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori... Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Eh, meanie! Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that, I, not that I was ever aware that she had an interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. I want to start a club. No, I wouldn't. I want to start a club. What am I saying? Too many social issues. <laughs> but don't we all, really? Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please! Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kinda told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. Say, are you fool? And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. Natsuki's just like such a common name. That and Yuri, which is another one of these characters' names, like I'm pretty sure like half the population of anime characters name are freaking Yuri. I'm telling you what. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Bitch, me too, I'd sell my soul for a cupcake, damn. I dejectedly followed Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third- being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? I mean, I'm not a boy, but you know what? We'll just go with that anyway. Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, little B, what a nice surprise. I'm trying to do some kind of accent for her. Should I try it? Should I try like a British accent or something? Well, I can I can do a somewhat of a British accent, but I have to like warm up first. And I don't like getting camera shy. <laughs> welcome to the club. I'll, I'll come back to that. Whole words escape me in this situation. Okay, that pink haired that pink haired girl in the middle there, she is cute. I think that's the lolly my brother is telling me about. Even though she's not actually a lolly, he says he just calls her that. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. I mean, if you're gay. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. Hm. <laughs> The girl with the sour attitude, attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. I like cupcakes. You can just ignore her when, you, when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. I thought you were always full of energy. 
And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid. Oh dang, I got that voice on, on like freaking point there. Dang. Seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. I can get along with her, damn. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? It's great to see you again, Lil B. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Oh wait, this is me. This is the narrator. <laughs> Monica was probably the most popular girl in school, in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. Keep forgetting I'm supposed to be a boy here. It's, it's frustrating. I'm not- I'm not into this kind of crap. I'm not used to this. <laughs> so, having her smile at me so generally- genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come, sit down, little bee. We made room for you at the table, so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them! I'll get them! Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then, how about I make some tea as well? I fucking love tea. The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, Sayori, that's right, it's quite, or it's been open so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Excuse me. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are we ready? Or are you ready? Ta-da! Oh, whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious. Sayori walks with her mouthful and or talks with her mouthful and already managed to get an icing on her face. Me too. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Dude, that's me! I do that all the time! I struggle with eating cupcakes. There's something wrong with me. Now, apparently not, because the creator of this game also struggles with it. But that's cool. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't hurt. Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? I thought you technically did. Sayori said, Well, maybe. But not for you, you know, you dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole lot of tea in this classroom. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. Fucking love tea. What kind of tea are you cooking there, girl? I'll have some of that. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a, a good book? Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, th that's not it. Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean, that, you know... I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I enjoy reading too. It's not that much, honestly. I, sh I should read more. Oh god, my eye itches. Shit. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature call? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I should tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seems really happy here, so... 
That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? Uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. Freaking hate politics. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And of course, it encourages others to get into literature, and then I'm fulfilling that dream. Literature is cool. I like literature. I just don't read that much. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard to find these three. I don't know who's the little deceit or the little bitch here, but I'm pretty sure it's this bitch right here. Not 100% positive. And it's also one of these two short hair girls that gets, gets, um... I'm assuming you guys have already known some about this club, but I'm not gonna say it just in case. I'm just gonna wait until that nasty part comes and we'll go with that. I'm 90% sure it's her that I'm talking about. Chances are you guys have already know enough about this game anyway before you saw my before you saw me playing it, but what the hell. Maybe that's why they were also delighted by the idea of new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Lil B, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past two years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that, that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, completely passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds com her comfort in the world of books, not people. I feel that. I hate people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Well, not like everybody. I, I have friends, and I'm not... I'm one of those edgy teenagers, you know. You know how it is. You're just like, oh, I hate people. It, it happens. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you through a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. I love horror. Let me freaking tell you. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. I feel that! I can't have a conversation for shit! Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or makes me or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Speaking of this, let me show you this book I'm reading right now. 
I don't know how well you can see it on the screen, but it's called H2O, and it's by Virginia Bergen, I guess that's how her name is pronounced. I'm like only maybe a third way through it right now, but it's really good. It's not really horror, it's a, um, it's like a, an apocalyptic book, like all these post-apocalyptic lame teenager books these days, like I don't like that kind of stuff. This is different, there's no, I mean there's a love interest, but it doesn't really play a big part of the book or anything. I'm like totally giving this person like a free shout out here, but this book is like so good so far, like I have trouble putting it down sometimes. I just started reading it less than a week ago and it's like awesome. The second I saw it in Barnes & Noble, I wanted it, but I couldn't afford it at the time I saw it. So now that I have it, I'm very glad I made the purchase at Barnes & Noble. It was, it was like 11 bucks, but there's not a, uh, there's not a whole lot of like good teenage, teenage books these days. They're all like freaking love triangles where the girl has to choose between two different hot guys. And I'm just like, I don't, I don't like that kind of stuff. Like. I read The Hunger Games, that was good, but now that's all you ever see anymore. Post-apocalyptic girl with trying to rebel against the capital or rebel against the government or whatever the hell, and she has to choose between these two guys who are apparently insanely hot. It's just, it's too much. I, I, I don't, mm, no, I don't care for it. Anyway, let's get back to this. I just wanted to have my rant. It's cool. We get, anyway. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Uh, I hate horror. Oh, what's that? Well, it just... Natsuki's eyes dart over me for a split second. Never mind. This girl is, like, totally into me right now. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? W what What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. Hey, your cupcakes, your poem... Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Say so sl- Sidles? Sidles? These must say slides. Slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hand on her shoulders. I'm not cute! And adorable, what's she talking about? Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? Mm, no! Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't. Oh god, excuse me. You wouldn't like them. Ah, I'm not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. I would agree. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for you, Yuri. Uh, I want to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Lily? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back in the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Siori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. Oh, join the club, you fucking bitch. I still have other clubs to look at, and, um, I'd lose my train of thought. Look at them all looking at you sadly, like, they're so disappointed! How could you break their hearts? Join the fucking club, bitch. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry, I thought... 
will be. You all. Look how freaking sad they are. Look at them. They're depressed. I mean, they think I'm a guy, which, I mean. I mean. I guess that makes sense. I want a guy to join. They're all like. Freaking okay, look at look at freaking what's her name? Natsuki though, the, the little pink girl. Look at her. She's like got this eternal blush going on. Like, girl. Could you not be any cuter? Like, look at her, she's freaking adorable. I, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear headed decision when it's like this? What if that's it. If writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey. You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everybody remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Philby, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I really- or I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Lil B. Since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Hey, yay! about the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Mon. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Uh, I haven't written a poem in like a million years. Uh, fuck. Okay. Desire, secretive, rain cloud, pink, cute, passion, despise, hopeless, fester, or feather. Hmm. I like dark poems, personally. Raindrops, flying, vibrant, marshmallow, uncanny, pleasure, climax, Jesus Christ, music, socks, and marriage. What the fuck? Um. Oh, raindrops. Kitty, empty, horror, excitement, resistance, cheeks, peaceful, blanket, sadness, philosophy. You'll probably just hurt me cracking my fingers. That's something I do sometimes. You're gonna have to deal with it. Existence. Covet. Childhood. Entropy. Awesome. Loud. Milk. Incapable. Fun. Insight. Tenacious. This word. Death. Damn. Fireworks. Disaster. Effulgent. Fluffy, party, parfait, destiny, misery, vivid. I mean, I would totally write a poem about death and misery, but I think we're gonna go with something a little less disturbing. Go with destiny. Vacation, melancholy, memories, twirl, whisper, sugar, graveyard, grief, alone, sticky. Hmm, sticky. Can I kill myself? I like whisper. Romance, journey, hurt, dance, friends, giggle, captain, judgment, 
clouds, variant, art clouds, imagination, boop, <laughs> just fucking just boop, boop, just like chocolate, nightgown, eternity, atone, rainbow, bliss, cry, sunset, fucking boop, no it's sunset. Pop, promise, joy, lucky, disoriented, tragedy, pain, sparkle, anxiety, sunny, promise, disarray, bed, forgive, bunny, oh my god, you're tempting me with the bunny right there, like bunny, mm, totally doesn't go with whatever weird ass theme I'm going with right now, but like, bunny's my thing. Lollipop, unstable, nature, oh god, holy crap, it's 10 o'clock already, nature, comfort, spinning, ribbon, hmm, disarray, incongruent, scars, disown, cage, together, sweet, breathe, waterfall, explode, starscape, breathe, Fear, crimson, play, portrait, special, universe, cheer, hope, treasure, suicide. I mean, I'm disappointed I had no some spoilers to this game, like, ugh. It would be so much more interesting if I hadn't met a lot of these damn spoilers. Shame, nibble. Dream, misfortune, warm, agonizing, bouncy, summer, skirt. I go with embrace. Fireflies, meager, doki doki, vitality, pure, vanilla, peace, determination, kiss, lipstick. With fireflies. Swimsuit, precious, ambient, dazzle, strawberry, vivacious. I don't know if I'm pronouncing some of these words right. Probably not. Analysis. Email. Rose. Heaven sent. I'm like rose. Calm. Beauty. Ocean. Whistle. Color. Broken. Sing. Lazy. Unrestrained. Poof. 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 Broken. Clumsy. Pout. Whirlwind. Infallible. Wonderful. Inferno. Fantasy. Shopping. Games. Depression. Good lord, what are these freaking words? Like, damn. Frightening, daydream, melody, flea, smile, headphones, essence, skipping, extreme, mouse. Hmm, I like daydream. Valentine, uncontrollable, jump, unrequited, amazing, electricity, adventure, intellectual, bubbles, vertigo. Hmm. That was amazing. Massacre. Cord. Kawaii. Lust. Fickle. Landscape. Massacre. Time. Shiny. Candy. Heart. Laugh. Fucking massacre. Time. Let's see how bad this is. Hi again, Lil B. Glad to see you didn't run away run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I at least keep my words. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Lil B. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. <clears throat> so you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. And I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <clears throat> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. 
Don't worry, guys. Luffy always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. I'm gonna change. I think I'm gonna change these gender things because, like, yeah. She helps me with busy work without me even asking, like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. So that's because your room is so messy. It's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Girl, you gotta chill. My boyfriend's a freaking firefighter. You would not like that. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Lil B can become good friends, too. Uh, um... S Sayori? Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, Yuri, even though you sit brought eh, even Yuri even brought you something today, you know? God, I can't talk now. Well, wait, Sayori. Uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Oh, she blushing. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. I have like hair for this and it itches. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gest gestures from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Uh, is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. How nice of her. Yuri, thank you! I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Siori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the core. corner. Your face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down on the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature-related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But, oh god, I had too much pop prior to this. But, I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. I'm probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. It's so, so it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the things to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberate, deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? W what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Ha, uh, good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, uh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Me too! Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, 
We still need to work out the details of the event itself. I found myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self, but therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I ended up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Okay, but like, where's my poem? I want to see the shitty poem that I wrote with a bunch of random ass weird words. I'm curious. Oh, what? Uh? I opened my eyes to find Sayori's fe face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry! Wait! Actually, I'm not sorry at all! It's your fault for sleeping like that! This isn't the napping club! Does our school have a napping club? Fuck, I would've joined a napping club. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always block looking out for me, Sayori. <clears throat> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? N not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret! I knew it. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt! I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? Oh my god, this goofball. I swear to god. You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Your hair is so cute. I love messy hairstyles. I love that shit. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just getting really hard to get right. It won't fall- or I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my fingers. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie! And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Oh, damn! 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 That was rude! I fucking played that shit on my brother once, saying, hey, I'm gonna go bleh. This is why you don't have a girlfriend yet. That was like one of the rudest things I ever said in my life. That is, that is a not nice thing to say. And I regretted it right after because I realized, shit, that was a douchebag move, but like, damn. Eh? That's super mean! Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Fucking boob shot, damn. <laughs> this is so funny! What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? Uh, just don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button in my chest. <laughs> oh god. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. Smiling about. It means my boobs got bigger again. Don't say that out loud! <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel so strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy! Ugh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Phew! That's so much better! Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. 
So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? Why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. That bitch is blushing. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Uh, I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we all, than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. Huh? So maybe you should wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Luby, I can't wait to weave yours! Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic. But Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I can't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everybody's he ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. I can't wait to read these shits. Sayori's is on a wrinkly, wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in the composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. Fuck, I need a drink so bad, man. I do the same myself. Okay, I think I'm gonna finally take a break here because I've been playing this for... Who even knows how freaking long? This is gonna be a long ass video. Like, who knows? This might even be like a freaking hour long. So, I think I'm gonna end this right here and come back to this whenever I show the poem to whoever I decide to show it to. Actually, you know what? How about you guys decide who I show it to first? Vote in the comment comments if I should show it to Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, or Monica first. Let's see how bad this poem actually turned out, because I'm kind of interested myself. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're liking what you're seeing, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. We'll be signing out.